Sometimes, in the movie business, things don't turn out as planned. We see that often these days, with all the failed shared universes that have come and gone. But back in 2006, long before the advent of the DC Extended Universe, Superman Returns brought the Man of Steel back to the big screen for the first time in nearly 20 years. Starring Brandon Routh in the titular role of Superman, the film wasn't exactly the most beloved by fans upon its initial release, but has since regained favor in the public eye. But did you know that there was a massive opening sequence that was cut from the theatrical cut of the film? Believe it or not, this opening would have started Superman's journey a bit closer to home. Superman Returns' deleted scene would have explored Krypton's destruction. Superman Returns starts with a brief reminder about Superman, Routh, and the planet Krypton, noting that the Man of Steel left Earth a while back after astronomers apparently found the remnants of his homeworld. With Kal-El gone, the film begins with Lex Luthor, Kevin Spacey, inheriting a vast fortune before we cut to Smallville, Kansas, where Superman crash lands back at the Kent farm, reuniting with his adoptive mother Martha Kent, Eva Marie Saint, before returning to Metropolis. But in the alternate opening to the film, called the Return to Krypton sequence, we learn a bit more about Superman's travels into the outer reaches of space. In some ways, it feels more akin to the character's adventures in the original DC comics. In the deleted opening sequence that feels like something out of Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey, Kal-El is seen traveling in a Kryptonian spacecraft constructed from his Fortress of Solitude on Earth. This crystalline ship carries the Man of Steel deep into space where he encounters the destroyed planet he may have called his home. While usually Krypton is completely obliterated, here we get to see the actual remains of the alien homeworld with familiar crevices and structures that look straight out of the original 1978 Superman, the movie this tracks. Since only Superman and Superman 2 are canon to Superman Returns. Eventually, Superman's ship discovers a giant Superman, S, embedded into the planet's surface, a symbol that acts as the bold crest to the House of El, Kal-El's birth family. But upon looking a bit closer, Superman notices that just beneath the surface, classic green kryptonite is there waiting for him. Using his spaceship to get away, Kal-El is weakened by the radioactive meteor rocks and barely makes it out of the interstellar graveyard alive before hitting the autopilot back to Earth. It's an intense opening scene, and with absolutely no dialogue and limited sound design, it would have started Superman Returns off with an introspective and reflective tone. In many ways, beginning this movie on Krypton would have been the obvious move given that both of Richard Donner's Superman movies did the same. Instead, this opted to cut the sequence from the finished film, only for it to show up online a few years later after the release of the Superman motion picture anthology. Superman Returns' deleted opening was expensive. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Return to Krypton cost an estimated $10 million to bring to life. It's clear why, given the immense scale of the sequence which expertly foreshadows the climax of the superhero motion picture. We know that for Zack Snyder's Justice League, the director was given an extra $70 million to construct his extended cut of the film, which only included one new scene. But, in contrast, this original Superman Returns opening scene, which only featured Brandon Routh on camera, managed to cost a significant chunk of change, only for director Brian Singer to cut the finished sequence out of the movie. I shot a whole scene with the Return to Krypton sequence, Singer explained in a 2006 interview. It's very elegant, but in the context of this movie, where this movie needed to be and what it needed to be about, I didn't feel it. If there's anything that Superman Returns did well, it's recapture the magic found in the original Superman films that were made famous by the one and only Christopher Reeve. While Brandon Routh played the character a little differently than his big screen predecessor, he also felt very true to Reeve's incarnation of the character. Of course, Superman Returns itself was a homage to the older films and a darn good one at that. With updated special effects, excellent casting, and plenty of callbacks to the original film series, Returns has been underrated for years. Yes, there were some questionable choices made along the way, but all of that falls away when you get lost in the excitement of it all. Ever since Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, fans waited anxiously for Superman to return. For a while, he did on television with Dean Cain as the Man of Steel on Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, and then later on with Tom Welling as a young Clark Kent on Smallville. But 2006 marked his official return to the big screen, though sadly he never got a sequel. Instead, the franchise was rebooted with 2013's Man of Steel, with Henry Cavill playing Superman in the brand new DC Extended Universe. Yet, 
Despite that, Brandon Routh returned as Superman once more in the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover between all the CW's live-action superhero shows, passing the torch alongside Tom Welling, who also returned, to newcomer Tyler Hoechlin, who has wowed audiences with his Superman on Superman and Lois. Recently, there have been whisperings that Brandon Routh may return once again as Superman, especially after the positive reception he received during Crisis on Infinite Earths. Brandon and I have talked about a sequel series, producer Mark Guggenheim revealed in February 2024. We have some really exciting ideas. Given James Gunn's upcoming Superman, starring David Corenswet as the character, it's unlike Routh will ever get a true Superman return sequel film, but it's still possible, given the various live-action Batman out there, that we could see his Man of Steel return in a future television series. Here's hoping that, like George Reeves before him, he can successfully make the jump from the theater to the television screen as Superman. Superman Returns is available to watch on Max in the U.S.